There are five species or types of sea turtles along the coast of Georgia. The Kemp's Ridley sea turtle, the hawksbill, the loggerhead, the green, and the leatherback. This program will discuss the differences between these five, but first, let's talk about what all sea turtles have in common. Sea turtles are marine reptiles, simply meaning they are reptiles that live in the ocean. Like other reptiles, sea turtles are ectothermic, which means cold-blooded. This means that sea turtles cannot keep their bodies at the same temperature as we do. Their bodies are going to be the same temperature as their surrounding environment. Like other reptiles, sea turtles are also covered in scales, lay eggs, and breathe air with their lungs. Sea turtles do not have teeth, but they eat instead with beaks. A special feature that belongs to turtles and not other reptiles is their shell. As we'll learn, some sea turtles have a hard shell and some have a soft shell. Now, let's learn about their differences. Hi everyone, my name is Taylor. I am an Education AmeriCorps member here at the Georgia Sea Turtle Center and we are going to do a series on all of the sea turtles that you can find in Georgia. So throughout the entire world, there are seven different species of sea turtle and right here in Georgia, we can find five of those seven species along our 100 mile stretch of coast. So I'm gonna introduce you to two of those species today. We're gonna to start off by learning a little bit about our Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. So these guys are the smallest species of sea turtle. They will only get to about 100 pounds and maybe about two feet in length, give or take. Uh, this is the shell for a Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. It's got a nice circular shape here. You can see that it's this brown sandy color, matches the environment that these guys live in, which is in the ocean where it's all sandy and muddy and they're looking for hard shelled crunchy crustaceans to eat. So Kemp's Ridley's have this nice hook shaped beak here. They eat a lot of crustaceans, other sorts of seafood that uh, are hard shelled creatures. And this hooked beak is really good for prying open hard shell creatures like that. They've also learned to adapt to eat uh, squid bait that is on the end of a fishing line. It's an easy thing for them to grab. So we do see a lot of sea turtles coming into our hospital, Kemp's Ridley specifically, that have gone after squid that is on the end of a fishing line. Therefore, we find turtles that have fishing hooks lodged either in their throat or farther down into their stomach. We work really hard to get those removed and get those guys back out into the ocean. These guys nest in a process called an arribada. Arribada is a Spanish word for arrival. They come up onto the beach in the middle of the day to nest all at the same exact time. Uh, that can be very deterring for natural predators to have thousands of turtles on the beach at one time. However, humans really tend to notice when something like that is happening. This is one of the reasons that their nests have been raided and their eggs have either been eaten or sold and why their numbers are so low today. Kemp's Ridleys are a critically endangered sea turtle species for many reasons. However, efforts are being put forth to conserve them. The nesting females and their nests are heavily protected in both the United States and Mexico. In Georgia, you can help Kemp's Ridleys by using bait other than squid, as it has been found to attract these sea turtles. And using circle hooks instead of J hooks may also lower your chances of catching a Kemp's. Our other sea turtle species that I want to introduce you to is the hawksbill sea turtle. So here we've got a shell for a hawksbill. It's this beautiful shell here. You can see all of these overlapping scoots. So all of these little portions of a shell, all these individual sections here, each of those is called a scoot that makes up a turtle shell. But a hawksbill sea turtle, their scoots sort of overlap like roof shingles, which is very different from our other sea turtle species. And it's got this beautiful tortoise pattern on the back. Now, you can find this tortoise pattern on lots of things that we buy today, jewelry, glasses. My glasses even have a little bit of that tortoise shell pattern. Um, most of the time it's gonna be plastic, but other times it is made out of hawksbill shell. Um, if you were out of the country, you might end up coming across jewelry that has been made out of hawksbill shell. That is one of the threats to these guys, is that their shell is so beautiful, it has in the past been used to make jewelry and trinkets and other sorts of pretty things because it is so beautiful. Um, these guys have this nice long shaped beak. 
sort of looks like a hawk's beak. They're able to reach into crevices and other sorts of nooks and crannies in a coral reef, and they're looking to grab these nice sponges that live in those crevices. They're actually made out of this glass material that can be pretty harmful for most uh, animals. However, Pottsville sea turtles, they have adapted to be able to consume this glass-like material. So they're very important for the coral reef ecosystem. They keep the sponge numbers low. Pottsville sea turtles, they can get up to 150 pounds and maybe about two feet in length. Um, they are the second smallest species of sea turtle. Well, thank you for joining us today. We will be having part two come out in a couple of days, and we will be talking about loggerheads and green sea turtles. So make sure you check back in for part two.